handicapped lots things that would cover me that I wouldn't be I thought, I thought I couldn't do it but there was always friends there was always people that were speaking to my life that would say bah, bah, Jesse you can do it it's possible all things are possible to them that believe they call the lots What's your lot this, this night? What's your lot? Pastor, what's your lot? Men's home director, what's your lot? Leader, what's your lot? Husband, what is your lot? Wife, what's your lot? What is it? What's your excuse? What is it? What's your lot? Because the Bible says it wasn't until he got rid of lot that he would say, now you can lift up your eyes. It's just like a veil came off me, Lord. I can see. Why? Because you got rid of that veil. You got rid of racism. You got rid of the barrio. You got rid of the old. And you came into the new. You can see different. You can see clearly. You can plant a church. We planted a church in Thousand Palms. People tell me, how come you plant a church in Thousand Palms? It's too close. Because I know that I'm not going to be able to reach the whole valley. I know that I can't do it by myself. I can't hog up the souls. I can't. But I can raise up men and women of God that are that are have a that have a that have a desire to go out. You know what someone told me? I almost smacked him in his mouth. <laughs> See, I was a gangster. You had a lot of man. Sometimes it gets me mad. You know what someone told me? And it got me really upset. He <laughs> told me I was ugly, man. I said, what? <laughs> now, you know what they say? I'm going to tell you guys it's going to get you guys mad, but it's going to motivate you. They told me, why do you have to send out a Mexican? Mexicans always back, backstab each other. They take each other's people. And I looked at that guy, man, and I said, dude. Why me? I'm glad Pastor Eddie wasn't there. Sucked them up, I would have took the blame. <laughs> Hit him again. <laughs> and it looked like I did it. <laughs> you know what I said to him? I never told nobody, I'm telling you right now. I got mad and I said, you know, I'm gonna prove. Like I proved everybody else, I'm gonna prove them wrong. I'm going to prove them wrong. They're going to see it. They're going to see. It's not about Mexicans. It's not about color. But the devil is trying to hold back and keep us in a small mentality, guys. I said, I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to prove them wrong. And it is going to be wrong. So I have a, the, the desire to plant a church. I'm planting another church in the valley. Yes. I'll plant another one in the valley. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Why? It doesn't matter to me. I don't care what people. I don't care what people say. It doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna die one day, and they're gonna have monuments of me everywhere. <laughs> like Rocky Balboa, watch out. <laughs> he was here. He was here. He was here too. Don't go there. He was there too. He was there too. Where? Right there. He started a church at the grave. Why? Because he said that he can raise the dead. Why? Because I believe anything. Are you crazy enough to get rid of your locks? I read a story about a person named Squeaky Fro From. Have you heard of that? Squeaky From. Squeaky From. They asked Squeaky From. Why did you follow Charles Manson? You know what he said? You know what she said? Because he gave me a purpose for living. Yeah. 
Yeah. See, there's more churches I've been have a lot of talent, but they don't have a unified vision yeah. to motivate the talent into action. Come on. So I'm here to tell you, a lot of you, you sit in the sidelines, but now you have to make the vision come to pass. JFK, John F. Kennedy, regardless of what you think about his politics, Kennedy stood up one day and he says, we're gonna put a man in the moon. We're gonna put a man in the moon. He had a vision. And it was clear, it was precise. When he said that, that was back in the 60s. The technology has not even been invented yet, and he's talking about we're gonna put a man in the moon. But today's impossibilities are tomorrow's miracles. My son told me, he says, Dad, you think that I can invent a car that can drive by itself one day? Most people would say, man, shut your mouth, you're crazy. You know what I told my son? Because I was studying on this. I told my son, son, if they can put a man in the moon, you can do anything. If they can put a man in the moon, you can plant churches all over the world. If you can plant a, moon, a man in the moon, you can plant homes. If they can put a man in the moon, you can reach the world, you can reach your city for Jesus, regardless of the regardless of how things look and the economy. If they can put a man in the moon, nothing can stop the church. eyes and look. Look to the south, look to the west. Every time I get up in my car, man, when I go to church, I'm so happy, guys. I'm so happy. Every time I get up in the morning, I tell my wife, I say, well, yeah, go to church. Go ahead, go, go, son, go. Because when we go in separate cars, I say, go to church. And when she leaves, man, I put on my suits. I bought myself. I put on my shoes. <laughs> I look in the mirror. I put on my nice shirt. And I remember the hard times, and I still go through hard times, but I remember hard times. I put it on, and then I get in my car, my nice Mercedes Benz, Cadillac, that's getting painted right now. I love it. I love it. I get in there, and I, and I think about the stupidity and the stupid stuff that I've done that I could have lost everything in my life. And I get in my car, and I drive down 44. Going down to the church and I pray to God and says, God, I want to thank you for choosing me, Lord. Yeah. 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 I want to thank you, Lord, that you picked me when I didn't deserve it. I want to thank you, God. When I drive down and I enjoy my ride and got money in my pocket. Because I'm blessed. I said, Lord, I want to thank you. And the homies look at me. You know what happened? They opened up nine middle schools. The SWAT team and the gang at that task force, they came knocking at my door. This time it wasn't to take me. It's because they need my help. Jesse's busy. I'm out there doing something else. He said, that's a busy man. I don't sit on my butt, man. I'm always looking. I got Joe Adams. Stand up, Joe Adams. He's one of the new members there. Yes. Yes. I, told, I told Joe Adams, I said, Joe Adams, I want you to go look for a church. I heard there's a church struggling. We can probably start a church right there. So I got him on the phone. He's looking to see if I can start another church. Men have potential. And they're looking and says they open the middle schools. So in the middle schools, just in two days, in two days, and you can you go ahead and go ahead and check me up if I'm lying. I'm not exaggerating. In two days, Sister Janet, how many kids did we speak to in two days? 1,400. kids. In February, what they did is that a church has never done this before. The guy task would open the doors, they closed PE and they gave us all periods from, from all from the first period to seven periods. They gotta come to Pastor Jesse's class. And sit down and listen to me now. You're gonna hear something. 
So I got all the middle school. The principal came in there and sat in there and he said, this is something else. That they opened up two high schools and they said, we want you in the high school. But I didn't ask for it. I didn't ask for it. I just followed the vision of my pastor. I just followed the vision that was in my heart. I just followed the vision to reach, teach, and men and send people. And I didn't ask for it. All I did was sit and I remember people always said, Pastor, how come things seem so easy? Because the battle says that we